So good evening, welcome to the Donny Chain Gang. My name is Matt Payne, and I'm going to be bringing you all of the action. It's been a really busy couple of days since last we were together, uh, watching everybody suffering up at Keith Hill. Uh, Russ and I seem to have been halfway around the world together and back, and I don't want to start any rumours, but I'll tell you something. It's great fun to have in the passenger seat, that's what all I can say. Uh, we have been doing all sorts of plotting and planning as well as getting some plenty of prep done. Loads of tech and yet again another change to all of the scenes that you're seeing right over there. As well as in here and up there and pretty much everywhere. So we've got changes in terms of depth, we've got changes in terms of uh, more images, we've got a little bit faster, a little bit tidier as well. My OCD was kicking off, so it's going to run a bit twitchy, you know what it's like. Uh, but more importantly, we've got a great course because we're back onto the Greater London Flat course and we're back in with Russ. I'm going to be uh, talking with Russ very shortly. You can actually see him over on the screen, just over there, and uh, Russ with the beacon over his head. We've got our traditional yellow beacon as Russ's ride leader and we have, of course, the red beacon, which is Martin Bolton. We'll run through all of the screens. I am going to get uh, Russ, I think, hopefully uh, on the phone and uh, we're going to see if we can uh, catch up with Russ. And let's see if we can tune into Russ. Russ, are you there, mate? Yeah, just about here. Just stick me here, so I'm going to be all right. That sounds good to me, mate. That sounds good to me. Now, I'm hoping we're going to get Russ on the uh, on the video. Let's see what we get. Hello, Russ. How are you? That's better. So, at the moment, Russ warming up. Uh, some good riding on Keith Hill. It looked brutally epic. How were you feeling after that? Not getting much sound from Russ. We'll see whether he's uh, going to be putting his headphones in. Let's see if we can hear him on his way through. Always an entertaining moment. So as you can see, Russ has to uh, get the headphones in. He's got the tunes turned up really, really loudly. So uh, let's see if we're going to get him. Here we go. So, oh, good. You can hear me now. Tech issues has been the uh, issue of the day. We've rejigging everything, folks. It really does mean Russ and I have actually literally rebuilt everything from scratch about four times in the last few days. Russ, uh, really busy day on uh, Tuesday. Where before you got onto the ride and then onto Keith Hill. How are you feeling by the end of that? It's a Look, well, it's, it is pretty busy, isn't it? We've been uh, stitching more cables together and virtual cables that I know what to do with. Uh, I'm loving the new kit, by the way. This is the uh, new downing cycling kit you've got on already. Yeah, looks uh, looks really good. I know, and uh, you've got it. I think it's come from uh, Elmore, hasn't it? From Dan Elmore, who's a, a real legend in the sport. I said, yeah, you know, I've got a great one connection with Dan Elmore, so he just uh, he chatted and he, yeah, he, he turned it around pretty quick. Yeah, that's what that's what we want. You want, to, isn't it? A quick turnaround and, and really nice kit. Uh, I've been privileged to see some of this, and uh, it is really, really nice. I'm very envious of the jacket. It looks the business. A uh, bit of a too much slimmer fit for me. I need the XXXXXL version, I think, of uh, the one you're wearing. Yeah, just, uh, just looking at the comments on screen, everyone's calling me John McEnroe or something. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that, that's kind of, you know, what do you expect, mate? It's, you know, McEnroe, definitely. Um, we'll see whether or not you've got the... Uh, the uh, 
the explosive power today because you're going to need it. That's for sure. Listen, we're really heading in time wise, so I'm going to let you get warmed up. We can see you're currently only kicking out about 100 and uh, 200 watts and uh, still heartbeats under uh, 100. So I think you need to get a move on and get uh, get winding it up a bit, maybe. Maybe, uh sounds like a plan well thank you very much russ we're going to let you head off we're going to go dive across and we're going to go straight into the course details um so we're going to leave russ there thank you very much russ a little bit of uh, noise and pages multiple screens here for anybody who saw the little uh, run in on the facebook page we have uh, something like five screens down in the studio uh two microphones two keyboards, two mice, um, iPad, iPhone, plus I can't remember what else, I have to be honest, I'm losing the plot, but it kind of works, so we're going to uh, make the most of that. Russ, just in there, we're going to just uh, make sure that we stay on Russ on his way through here, and uh, he's uh, going to be the man that we want to keep an eye on, that is for sure, as he heads out on to the course. I remember, of course, this course is really, really tough. So away they go. We're going to jump up to the helicopter shot. Uh, so they start to uh, ride out. You can just see the beacon there on Russ. And all these riders leaving. You can see the course map up on the top right-hand side of your screen. And just leaving those chevrons as I go through. Uh, Mr Thwaites wanting it to be easy till about 500 metres to go. Uh, I'm not sure, mate, that your uh, your wish is likely to come true, given who we've got on there. We're going to feature some of our riders in a minute. Before we do that, let's get you the details of the route out there. So, as you can see, the uh, course out there, look in the uh, business. You start off on the red run in, that's the leading 5.7 kilometres. You then go through the green sprint line, start the circuit proper, up the Constitution Hill, back round and round the loop. Now, this looks pretty straightforward. Dead easy running, multiple circuits, the circuit 11.6 kilometres. It looks it on there, and one of the reasons it looks it on there is because we haven't given you the profile yet. The profile is something different again. Now, here we go. This is the course profile, and what we've done is uh, we've just exaggerated the height just a teasy wheezy bit just so that we can actually show you some of the really key points here now you come into the circuit if you look in the center of the map there's a, a little section a bit of like a sideways y shape and that is constitution hill that's where the sprint is so the sprint is in the middle of where those three points join your constitution hill and down which is the tiniest little rise then round this circuit in a clockwise direction which and Camera wise is that direction. Oh, I've got to go the wrong way. Really confusing this bit. So as the riders go in and around, the riders are going to go drop down onto the mall and then onto Parliament along the embankment and then that long section that uh, runs around the bottom of the circuit, down the very bottom section there, that is really flat. And they then come off the river. When they come off the river up on the very top corner, and they then climb. Now you'll see as the riders go up there, there is a big dip in the middle. And that dip is the underpass at the side of Hyde Park. This is really, really critical for the riders. Now it's a two, 3% climb up. It levels off and then it drops over. As you drop over, the gap starts to open up between our riders. We've only got six meters of drafting and it opens its way in and through. And it is really important that the riders make sure that they are on the back as you drop into that because what happens is you go under the underpass and then up the other side, it really starts to open up and that's where people will attack, that's where people are gonna go hard. Now, the aim of the chain gang is to get everybody round, get everybody having fun, but you've gotta be on there because as you can see from this fantastic graphic from Velo Viewer, and if you've not been on the site, get on the site. It is a fantastic resource used by every commentator I know as well as most of the pro teams. What you need to do is get on there and look and look at the colour chart. Now, it's not quite as dramatic as we had it when we were at Keith Hill on Tuesday. But, steep kick out of the underpass. It then comes up out of the underpass. And what happens is, as that happens, you come up, it rises up, and then it steadily levels and it kicks again. 
and then there's a steep down again and you've got to get that up and that down right if you get that wrong you are going to be in big big trouble because the gap will go and as you can see it's going to run back down into the center of the course there into the section that is the run around into the sprint. Now, Russ gonna try and keep this all together. We're gonna drop back in with Russ later on. So let's get back out. As you can see, the riders making the way along the embankment and uh, all these riders coming and feeding through. I think pretty much most of the group are together. Only one or two riders not in the group. Marty Bot, our sweeper just out at the back now. Quick explanation of what you're going to see on your screen. And uh, I think to do that, let's get over to the main ride screen and we'll catch up with what the riders are up to. So here we go, main ride screen. This is the most important thing you're going to see uh, today because up on the top corner of your screen, you can see that there is the map. Now the map is absolutely critical for you because the map gives you key information. Zoom in and we get our 3D image of our riders riding along the straight. They're going to take the right-hand turn up onto Northumberland Avenue, which gives you a 4% rise. That's coming up very shortly, but at the moment, the gradient up in the top corner, hovering around about the 0 to 1%. If we uh, go over the top, you can see that group is all together. The yellow beacon with the yellow chevron, that's Russ. Uh, if you go down a little bit, you can uh, just see Russ's arrow just working its way up. It's currently sitting two-thirds of the way through the group and that corresponds with the big pack that you're seeing. If we zoom out, we get the map, and the course is in the gray with the black boundary. We're gonna go take the sharp right-hand turn any second, up onto the hillside, into Trafalgar Square. Yep, that Trafalgar Square, the main one right in the center of London. So we're taking that right-hand turn, and we're gonna take a look down now, with a real look down from Russ. Uh, as he goes in and through here. So you can just see Russ in the uh, grey there, steadily trying to work his way up and through that group. You can see a big mass of riders on the way up here. So at the moment, the guys are working the way up this climb and it's looking pretty good as they go up the helicopter just over the uh, top here. So as they go on the climb, we're holding at two and a half watts per kilo. And uh, as you can see, we're gonna have a little look at some of our other riders out there. So let's see who's up on the uh, climb right up at the front. I think it's gonna be Lee Allen, who are we gonna see somewhere up near the uh, front of that group. Always uh, tricky to catch up with all of the riders on the way through. That uh, lots of our regulars on here I think uh, Isaac Witchard joins us uh, today uh, for one of the uh, first few times. So here we go, just uh, got our riders up on the top of the hillside and uh, we're just taking a little bit of a look as they go in and through. It's looking pretty busy in that group at the minute. Now Lee Allen currently kicking out 215 watts at the moment. It certainly looks to me like it is a very, very busy on the course at the moment. This group looking like they're holding together well at the moment. And that is exactly what we want to see. So these riders are really winding it up at the moment. Uh, it looks like Russ has gone for a bit of a flyer here off the uh, front here. So let's take a quick look uh, from Russ's point of view here. And uh, we're just going to take a little bit of a look back from Russ. Here we go, Russ Downing, Downing Cycling, leading the uh, group out. In, I think he's kicked a uh, draft boost on his way through. Currently uh, kicking out 184 watts and just starting to get swept up by that group. And you can see if we go down to the side view, they're all flying down the side of Russ at the moment. This is from Russ's helmet cam that we've got stationed. We drilled a big hole in that helmet, put a big camera in there. They're pretty small these days. And this is the view from that helmet, Russ, of course, riding in the middle of this group. And as you can see, this group weaving its way. It's now going down into Trafalgar Square. The group really has spread up and it's starting to spit one or two people out of the back. And that uh, looks like Russ uh, just about to get a proper grump on as uh, he makes his way down here. He's looking for people to keep the pace down at the moment. All the riders are just about holding together here as we come on to the mile. We're going to go drop to our 
drone cam and this will let us take a, a little bit of a, a spin around the a group of uh, riders and as you can see at the back we now have one or two riders just starting to be distanced hopefully it's going to regroup as they come through after the sprint this isn't going to be a big key a sprint you're going to see one or two riders really going for it here and uh, i suspect they're not going to be the most popular people out on uh, the circuit at the moment as the uh, riders down the front go for it, there was like uh, not too many people taking too much notice of Russ as they came through there. That's not going to make him a happy buddy. But now we've got to look to see what damage it's done. I think most of that group is together. We're going to take a little bit of a zoom through. And uh, if we have a little bit of a look up above uh, Russ, you can uh, just uh, see not too many people distanced at the back of him. Uh, one or two riders out of the front of the group and this group holding together. Now on the chain gang, you normally start off nice and steady. Try and hold everybody together as long as possible. And it really is a real mix of riders in here. And you're gonna try and uh, bring you some of uh, our regulars in this uh, group. Uh, one man who uh, we credited potentially last time out with having uh, slightly more leg speed than in reality is a certain Mr. Martin Dainty. Now, uh, Martin is right in the middle of this group. Let's see if we can take a little look at him. We're gonna have to drop up, I think, and uh, look back down on him with our drone cam. So Martin is in the yellow. Martin, I credited with being on uh, the uh, fixed bike. He actually changed to a road bike because he didn't think he was gonna make it up the hill. Martin, of course, former uh, national champion. He's also uh, known for going so hard that uh, he makes himself seriously poorly. Uh, Lindsay, I have to say you deserve a medal for putting up with him um, and uh, I hope your sink is a much better state at the end of this one. Don't let him go too hard, but we'll see if uh, Longman's gonna be able to do the business this time around as the Martin Dainty just rolls his way into the front, currently kicking out 215, 216 watts, just ticking around at 68 rest per minute. Those are the numbers in the blue box up in the top corner of the screen. Now let's have a look at some more of our regular riders on the chain gang. This is going to be young Mr. Cooper. Now Mr. Cooper is a little bit of a mini legend and uh, Cooper of course are riding for the Assured Pies team. Let's see what kit George is in. Currently riding in the red kit. Uh, George it doesn't look like this in real life believe me. Is that light? In fact he's actually lighter than that. Uh, there are rumours that actually a packet of chocolate digestive so when wet way more than Mr. Cooper and it helps him when he's uh, flying around on the mountain bike but been putting some mega miles in during uh, this lockdown period the fact he gives his dad a kick in every time he goes out well uh, you know that's just the way of the world these days so George another of our young riders I'm going to have a look down at the list. Let's see which other of our youngsters are here. I think we're going to have a little look at Isaac. Is Isaac somewhere up near the front? We're just going to try and zoom in on Isaac. And Isaac in the blue kit. We're going to just scroll around here. So Isaac, another one of our youngsters coming on and joining the chain gang, doing the business up at the front at the moment. Remember the aim of this to keep the group together. And if we just take a little bit of a look up and back, you can just see one one or two riders starting to be distanced. I think the call is going to go out to knock the pace down just a little bit. And Mr. Stevenson of uh, out of the cell is going to know that. So is Mr. Hawkins of uh, Bolsov and District. All these are riders absolutely flying around. All right, time for more of my uh, Grand Tour coffee whilst I try and work out just who is in trouble up at the back of the group. For us at the moment working hard. And I think uh, one of those riders who might have been just having a hard time is the man who threatened to be putting his bike on the, uh, his motorbike, that is, regular rider on uh, the uh, Ed National Escort Group. It is Paul Morton. So Paul in at the group at the back. We'll take a quick look at Paul. Paul, nice facial hair, Paul. Um, his avatar is slim now. Paul, at one stage, was your typical motorbike uh, riding, big Harley style rider. He's very light in this avatar, and do you know what? That's a testament to the amount of riding he's been doing. Great to see him out and riding on the uh, chain gang. And of course, the uh, PMR racing, uh, the PMR Tokyo team, uh, all part of uh, Paul's work these days. And uh, not all that long ago, he's out on the uh, Tour de France. Another of our regulars who's just near the back of the group. Now, you might recognize the name, a certain C Crutchlow, that's Cal Crutchlow. 
uh, absolute legend in motorsport and a very, very handy rider. Kel's riding what is the lightest setup in Zwift. This is the Tarmac Pro bike with uh, lightweight wheels on there. Now, if he had MV wheels or lightweights on there, he would indeed be on the lightest setup going. At the moment, that's not critical because what you really need, deep rims, loads of aero pads, keep up with all of the rest of the riders. Let's see if another of our regulars has the full lightweight setup on the go at the moment. So it looks like the lighty setup is there, and uh, that is with a V bikes. Now you can see a V, who is on one of our riders joining us from abroad, uh, currently uh, negotiating a house move over in uh, Costa Rica. Still finding time to get in the pool, which which I'm very jealous. But uh, the the uh, popcorn and Dorito addict currently uh, looking pretty light on that bike. The uh, S Works Pro. The Tarmac Pro lightest bike and with the lightweight wheels in the Melenstein wheels which are the lightest setup, lighter even than those Tron bikes. Now the riders in this group look to be just about holding their own. I'm going to just have to take a little bit of a look up the road. This group is nicely holding together one or two riders off the back here. Let's see if we can see who's up and near the back here. Looks like Mr. Davis and the uh, Sister uh, Fibrosis team riders is in here. I'm just see him pedaling along nicely on that purple track, rolling around with him. I think we've got Andy Verrill. Good to see Andy back in the uh, group again. Let's try and get across to Andy and give a good, Andy a little bit of a look. Andy, know your black kit. We should know you're in that black kit, mate. So Andy Verrill just uh, rolling around. There's Andy. And uh, Andy, a very experienced rider as well, of course, is one of the men who's uh, been instrumental in uh, making riders get the uh, careers that uh, they should have, that's for sure. Uh, Andy, a, a real knowledge base as well as uh, a handy rider. And uh, just hovering around the back at the moment, probably uh, saving his legs. Let's take a uh, little bit of a look further around the back. Makes a nice change to hover around the back of a ride because you see lots of different faces in there. Uh, although Mr. Stanningland is not usually at the back here, we'll have a little look at Mr. Stanningland here. We're just going to drop up over the top, have a little spin round, and see if we can get a good look at Mr. Stanningland here. So let's uh, just have a little bit of a zoom in. And uh, there we go, looking very cool at the moment. Nice shades, mate. Let's start rolling. Another one of the uh, lightweight bikes, not necessarily the uh, best kit to uh, bring. You can just see along the side him. I think uh, that is going to be uh, Mr. Oxen, and I suspect who is riding on a uh, slightly different bike. Remember, this is one of the massive things that you can do when it comes uh, to uh, Zwift, is you can customise your bike. You can pick what kit you have. You can pick whether you've got a lightweight bike. You can pick the length of your socks, your hair. This personalisation makes Zwift one of the ultimate gaming platforms, and certainly in my mind, the uh, best gaming platform out there uh, to ride, to train. And remember, the guys at the moment are on a group ride. You can go do a race, you can do a custom workout, all courtesy of Swift. And if you're wondering why the pictures are so good, we've got to say a massive thank you. The computing power that we're using here has been more than doubled by Swift over the uh, last few weeks. And that is enabling us to be able to bring you all of the uh, images even clearer and with all of the graphics as well. Now we're going to take a little bit of a flick up through this uh, group now and see who is in the uh, danger zone. We don't want to see the group uh, falling apart just yet. We just left the side of the embankment. If you look up to the uh, top right of your screen, you see the riders are about to make their way up. They've come off the riverside. They are now on to the section that starts to climb up towards Hyde Park. If you've been there in real life, this is so representative. And if you've got a smart trainer, the gradient is definitely the same. It really is uh, tricky stuff on the way through here. But this group is uh, holding it together. Now, I might well go uh, dive in uh, with Russ in a minute. Let's see if uh, we can pick some of our riders, maybe a little bit nearer the front. Uh, let's have a look. Well, have we got Andy or have we got Ali Acres? There's only one way to find out. Well, let's go dive into the uh, bunch and see. I think this is uh, going to be Andy who's in there. Oh, he's in the GB kit. Well, that is appropriate because he is one of our key BC uh, coaches, mate. I'm sure your head doesn't look 
quite like that in real life. Uh, so unless Ollie's jumped on your profile, who does potentially look that uh, lead and mean, and suspect that is uh, going to be somebody slightly uh, uh, misrepresented by their avatar, let's say, because your hair is definitely longer than that for a start, and it's uh, more my colour scheme, and that's for sure. Now let's jump up a little bit further up and through the uh, bunch. Let's have a uh, check another of our riders who is a regular on the uh, chain gang. This is Gail Phillips. And there uh, you just see Gail in that blue kit, just starting to uh, work away in uh, through this bunch. And just uh, starting to move up, looks like just in front of uh, Shore of uh, Sitwell. He's the rider with the uh, red and black stripes, just going alongside Phillips. Phillips, not too far away from our yellow beacon as well. But you can see this bunch is uh, working well here at the moment. Good to see uh, Instagram addict that is uh, Chris uh, from the Alliance MTV in there uh, get on his feet and uh, yes mate definitely excessive but definitely entertaining your uh, Instagram feed now I'm going to take a little bit of a look for more of our riders in here and whilst we're on this run in it's a really big bunch still holding a hundred riders together now one man who always uh, good to uh, take a look at this is my uncle Ted well not really but it's what we now call him he's universally known as my uncle Ted for some really random reason it's not actually true uh, that he is uh, uncle Ted but uh, he has offered to lend me his Tron bike every now and then and uh, Ted in a uh, very uh, fetching uh, colored jersey there mate I'm not sure it goes with the uh, pink hat and bike I might need to do a little bit of uh, talking about color sense here I I hope you are not quite uh, so colour clashing in real life. That's pretty bad news, is that? In fact, I might have to change riders just so I don't need to put my shades on to look at the uh, clashing combination there. Now, let's go right up to the uh, front of the group here. Let's have a look at uh, Coach to Rider. And we're looking for Tom Bowring. Tom, one of the uh, Downing Cycling Riders. I'm going to have a little bit of a spin around, see if we can zoom back down in. I think he's going to be the man in the green. He is indeed. And hopefully we're going to be able to take a little bit of a look. Oh, no, he's in the black. There we go. Here's Tom. Going over to the black jersey today. And Tom are riding along here, kicking out 298 watts. It's four watts per kilo. And that's because we're now on to the techie run into the underpass so if we take the camera shot up you can see we are now into that underpass we've dropped down and the speed is starting to pick up middle of your screen top center 57 58 kilometers per hour and what we're going to find now is that if we jump her to our drone cam if we take a little bit of a look behind we're going to start to see some gaps opening up behind and you can see just behind the gaps are starting to open one or two riders just being dropped as they go down over the crest and into the underpass now is the power coming off there's a lot of feathers you see the green dots over the top of the riders that is the feather flags from the riders they go through and uh, not too far before we head the, into the running, let's see if uh, we can catch up with uh, Russ as uh, so the riders start to uh, make their way along. Let's have a little bit of a, a look as they come in and uh, through. So we'll leave uh, Tom as our uh, man who we're uh, following as the riders come through. Let's uh, see if we can dive across and uh, pick up uh, Russ. And uh, let's see if we can get some uh, sound from Russ on the way through. In fact, let's join him on something bigger. What's what's that mean? The Russ is there giving it. It's, your legs haven't gone already, have they? That's not a good sign. So Russ at the moment. Like oh, you feeling it after that climb? That's not good uh, news, mate. And um, tell tell us, it's just about holding together, I think, at the minute, isn't it? Um, is it looking like it's going to stay that way? Because it looks like everybody's in a really, really fast mood at the moment. I've got to keep going for the sprint, but it's not happening, is it? <laughs> it's looking a little bit tricky to hold all that lot together. They're a bit like the tide waiting to break up. I think it's going to be very, very quick today. And it's just see you on the downhill now coming in. It's absolutely smashing apart, isn't it? 
I don't think Russ is going to have the uh, voice to talk. We're on the run into the sprint here. I'm going to stick with Russ a little bit longer. I don't think after that climb he's got the uh, legs to stay with the uh, front group here. And you can just see people are starting to really wind it up, up at the front. We're going to try and drop to a slightly different camera angle. We're going to jump very quickly. So apologies as we work our way up through the uh, sprint uh, riders here. We're going to try and work our way up towards the very front of this group and we're going to pick a rider who's going to be quick here let's see what mr dainty does should we jump upon dainty why not he's always a good rider i suspect he's going to be trying to kick in with his sprint i'm not sure whether he can stay with the group here there's some very fast riders in here and uh, i think uh, he's uh, gonna be uh, up against it but he's holding the front of that group together at the moment we're going to see, is anybody down the road? Nobody down the road at the moment, but uh, Dainty starting to get mobbed here. And uh, it could well be, we're going to see Fox coming through. Could be Bishop. Little is always quick. I think we're going to watch Kirkpatrick. I know he's got a sprint on him. And you can just see really starting to get wound up at the front. And just to watch him, Mr. Kirkpatrick here as he starts to kick in. And big numbers coming out. 11 watts per kilo. Watsonham's got on 12 watts per kilo. He's just in front. Is Kirkpatrick going to be able to take it away as they come in through? He goes through with the fastest time. So Kirkpatrick goes with the 964, but he's not holding it. Look at that. I think it's going to be Darren Clark. Who has uh, taken it off him? Let's see if we can drop across to Clark. Here we go. It is going to be Clark. If we can grab him, he's going to take it. So it's Clark who is in the black kit here. So Clark it is who takes the sprint. And uh, Clark coming through there. Now Clark is the man who's uh, taken the uh, top sprint so well done Daryl Daryl riding along very very smoothly there taking a 9.20 and that is some going and you can just see him drifting towards the back of the group you can see the bunch coming past him here but uh, Daryl Clark a 9.62 that is uh, some serious uh, speed on his way in to the circuit so fantastic riding on his way in russ not having the pace there we're going to drop across to the main ride there uh, russ just asked everybody to ease up so you can see there russ is working hard not able to match the pace of the riders and we're just going to pull up that sprint daryl clark taking it from uh, josh kirk and patrick and then it's going to be oxenham in third place lock in fourth russ downing taking fifth place on his way through cal crutchlow Man, that boy's quick on two wheels. Coming in with a sixth spot, a 10-3-1 at the moment. And as we uh, start to watch Clark come through, I think he's just going to be uh, right at the back of this group. You can just see Clark just rolling by the side of Russ Downing there. Now, in the women's competition, let's get across to Swan, because Swan put in another storming time here. Swan in the traditional green jersey, absolutely one of our super fast riders time and time again this old woman absolutely nails it. it's really good to see lily kicking out those watts and uh, that heart rate coming down nicely at the moment down at 148 147 it's dropping down revving nicely 100 uh, revs per minute and uh, still kicking out 200 watts here so if we uh, take a little bit of a, a shot across, we're going to be able to uh, run around to the side. Now you can see a zip 808, so the wheels that uh, is uh, being ridden here uh, by Lily Swan, putting in a great ride, and uh, one of those riders who we know can do the business time and time again, absolutely flying, and just rolling away up towards the front. So uh, Lily uh, bringing this uh, group uh, up into the uh, front there, and I suspect we're going to find... She's going to be pulling the group across. This is where I suspect we're in danger of seeing a little bit of a gap go. Now, one of the fast riders, Ryan Williams, is up in the group in front of Swan. I think it is going to be Cooper Woodall, which uh, Curtis Whitfield Bowring, who she's uh, rolling into the back, and Lily kicking hard to go in there. Now, uh, Lily uh, gets the audio. If you're watching this back, on the YouTube channel. Don't forget that this goes out live. So what you can always do, put your main screen up with Zwift on it and you can get the commentary by clicking onto YouTube on your browser and then putting the window on minimize or put it out on your speakers, you get commentary. 
and uh, if you're getting one of those green jerseys lately like uh, Daryl we are going to be on there now we're going to take a little bit of a jump across from Lily uh, and going to take a, a little bit of a look across to see who is up there let's have a look at Carl Crutchlow let's see if we can jump in with Carl easier said than done at the moment but Carl Crutchlow in the uh, stripy yellow and black jersey there uh, rolling around well fifth place in the sprint at the moment for Cal and uh, kicking out 238 watts so no heart rate on him be really interested to see what that fitness is like we're going to drop a little bit further back through this group now it's holding it together at the moment uh, and uh, I think the split has gone that uh, behind Tom Bowring so we're going to go back from town Tom Bowring to the next group on the road let's see if we can see who it's going to be I think it is uh, going to be Lee Jenkins and uh, Ali Akers it is the duo here now the uh, riders who are just uh, behind that main group in fact Matt Manneke looks like he's been dropped as well so Manneke sandwiched in between he's got company but uh, then it is this um, quickly a coalescing a group here which is Ali Akers then I think it's going to be Lee Jenkins who is a rolling along beside here Lee kicking over 220 watts going to get company very shortly indeed because big man's on his way up with uh, Mr Fraser on the back it's uh, Flanders Fraser coming on the uh, wheels here so uh, these are riders currently about a minute down on our leading group I suspect we're going to see a group forming of them just behind them we're going to see a Taylor and they can just see the riders at the distance as we go past the harnesses of parliament so it's a uh, Taylor here just rolling up in front I think this is uh, going to be uh, John Hind we're going to just uh, double check so let's see if we can get uh, back uh, with uh, Russ. Let's have a, a little uh, check to see if uh, he's going to be on the end of the phone line. Let's see. Now then, Russ, that looked a little bit spicy. We're uh, just dropping back through some of the riders behind. That sprint really broke it up, didn't it? Yeah, it was a really good sprint and uh, it was fantastic to uh, see uh, Lily come uh, through. She absolutely annihilated it in, in, and took that green jersey in, in some style, that is for sure. At uh, the two sprints, I mean, a really fast time. 9.2 seconds for the fastest time. And uh, Mr. Kirkpatrick, uh, with a sub-10 second, ended up in second place. Yeah, I think anything under 10 normally wins it, doesn't it? I think I won it with a 9-something the other week. Uh, so, yeah, that Clark was always knocking on the door. So, he's, uh, yeah, he's like Tuesdays. So he's always saying, oh, yeah, I can't make Tuesday. I do something else, but... Oh, we, pressure, pressure he's absolutely he's been flying really really well hasn't he and it's really interesting to see just how hard he's able to push and and like you said it'd be really interesting to see him out on the tuesdays which are always hillier aren't they so uh, i'm sure you've got more of the same plan don't give anything away where we're going yet i'm sure everybody's desperate to head out on the new uh, swiss circuits in france I don't think we're going to get that. It's still, but, uh, yeah, we're working on that. So let's see. Uh, I think a few people fancied uh, the Innsbruck KOM, but I don't see how they're going to put a poll out. See how everyone's feeling. And, uh, yeah, when they, when they write it on the Facebook page, that's where you go. So be careful what you wish for, guys. <laughs> it's a dangerous thing to see, isn't it? Definitely. If uh, people put it on the Facebook page, then uh, that's where it wants to be. And uh, the more comments on, on there, the better, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, we're getting a great yeah, and that's what we want to see. Really interested to see uh, Andy Verrill just sitting in the group with Mr. Taylor and uh, Kuzak, uh, the rider from Brixton Cycles. So those three working together, they're uh, in front of our uh, sweeper, but uh, it looks like groups are starting to form pretty much all the way around the circuit now. 
It is, it is, and it certainly looks to be working really, really well. Well, Russ, we're going to let you uh, get your legs back together again. We're going to jump up towards the front of the group once again. Thanks for chatting, Russ. And, uh, I need to get off the back before I get dropped. Indeed, and we're going to catch up with the very front of the ride with a bit of luck. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Good night. So Russ is uh, just heading off and he's going to be out on the circuit and we're going to uh, catch up with him uh, afterwards, see how people have got on at the moment watching Clark on his way through the circuit. We're going to do a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery with the uh, wonders of uh, technology and we're going to aim to try and dive right the way up to the front of the group. Not always the easiest thing in the world to do, but let's see if we can get ourselves right up with the leading group. I'm hoping, as if by magic, we're there. We'll see. Carl Crutchlow's in here. That's always a good sign. Mr. Oxenham's in here. Dainty's in here. Looking good at the moment. We're going to just take a uh, little look. Mr. Bowering is in this group. I suspect they're closing in on uh, Ball. Ball's showing up as being 16 seconds in front, but he's only got 11k on the uh, clock. And that's the way to tell. If you're watching the screen on the top or right, you will see that these are riders who are on the way through have covered 25k already and are absolutely flying on the way through here. So as our helicopter makes its way up over the top of the riders, you can just see this package changing. It's very, very fast moving indeed. As it goes up and through, looks like Russ just about making his way to the front. Just in danger of getting uh, rolled on his way around here. I think uh, Tunnicliffe is up in the front of this group. Uh, I'm going to try and jump up with uh, Mr. Tunnicliffe. He is indeed. Uh, it is pretty spicy up there. Now, let's give you an indication of where we are out on the course with our leaders. Our leaders have worked their way all the way up the long, gradual climb that takes them away from the river. We've tried to focus on a number of riders a little bit further down. We'll try and get uh, everybody in there. So the group, this is the chasing group here uh, that uh, is working hard just at the back of the screen on your right hand side but up at the very front of the screen, Dainty Bowering, uh, looks like Jono Bowering's in there, Little's in there, Copeland's in there, Tony Cliff's in there, Oxenham, looks like Mackham's in there as well, Carl Kaplinski, what a surprise, Carl up near the front, looks like Story is sitting in this group as well, let's have a quick check on Story because if it is story from the Isle of Man, she's putting in a great round once again and uh, riding up onto the front here so we're watching story at the moment and Becky's story from uh, the Isle of Man, one of our regular riders and surfing those wheels really well, that drafting on Zwift is absolutely critical and you can see as we've gone down into the underpass the speed has picked up now up to 60 kilometres an hour, we're going a little bit quicker than last time the question is, who is going to be able to stay at the front? Already seeing people dropping in feather. It's a bit early, you need to kick it in just as you come out of the tunnel about here. And this is where it's going to get really tricky. Who's going to be winding it up on the front? It looks to me like Sandy Smith's moved up there. We're looking for some red numbers to start coming from the back of this group. Look at those feathers coming in. And the drafting is an absolute sea of power-ups on the front. As Rob Copeland is the man who is winding it up on the front here. We're going to drop in with the Rob if we can. Let's see if we can get in with Rob Copeland. It is Rob who is winding it up on the front. And if we take a little bit of a look back, let's see if we can get a view back to see just how many people have been distanced. So look at that. It's a blob behind. It's a peloton chasing. But the group is fractured a little bit more in the back. And at the moment, it looks like Taylor's just come around him. So is this uh, Taylor? It is Matt Taylor who's just come around the side. Taylor who's already taken away green jerseys. A plain tea. He wears one to bed every night of the week just to rub in the habit, apparently. 
in uh, fact his dad was uh, telling me that it was all he ever wanted for Christmas when he was a little child well he's got tin plenty but he's got company on his way through here Taylor one of the uh, Downing Cycling the coach riders leading it out with Mr Oxford him on that Zodiac bike right behind him Copeland currently sitting in third wheel here as we start uh, dropping uh, down remember the time is ticking on we're now uh, 37 minutes of 38 minutes of riding Russ is winding his way in through here then we just uh, take a little bit of a look back. This is the leading group of uh, riders, and the gap is at four seconds to ferret for to Stadiumland. This is what's left of the front of the race here. So on that descent down, as you come off the top, it split the group out. Are they going to come back? They were sitting at four seconds. We're taking a look back. Four seconds doesn't sound much. It's not much, but are they able to pull it back? The gaps will open up. Now let's have a little bit of a look here. It looks like Taylor at 4.8, Copeland 5.5. We know Copeland's figures are true. Just to watching the uh, figures there, we know that Martin Dainty not running a power meter on there, doing the calculations from the what's called a Doma Turbo Trainer. It doesn't measure the power, it works on the resistance within the trainer, and then multiplies it up with the speed and the uh, revs of the wheel that is going through it, it works it out from that now, that is very, very tricky to get absolutely right, Rob Copeland as you can see riding on that power meter up at the uh, front of uh, this uh, group with uh, Luke, uh, with, sorry, Lee Allen just coming through, Luke Taylor is up there as well, this is the group that are going to come in to contest this sprint and it's still a pretty big group, 30 riders in this group, who's the man who's going to go for it? Now we're going to see who can kick down hard. Is Russ going to be able to take it away to take the uh, win here? Uh, we're going to see who has got this. And a big kick now coming from Oxenham just as he goes in and under. I don't think he's going to trouble the time of Clark. He doesn't. So Daryl Clark still holding 9.2. Uh, Kirkpatrick 9-6-4 but a little kick like that is likely to have broken up the group it's still got Cal Crutchlow in there and it looks like one man starting to be uh, distanced here it is uh, going to be uh, down and it looks like Story's got back into the back of this group we're just looking back behind to try and see who is being distanced so Matt Manakey currently sitting at 2 seconds 80 Dench at 2 seconds Sandy Smith at two seconds, Mark Thwaites having a better ride than on a Tuesday and at the moment in fact it looks like Daryl Clark has been distanced, let's drop in with the green jersey rider, look at this, this is Daryl Clark as they've come through the sprint, we're now on to that climb as we ride up, Clark is going to get swept up by the second group on the road, here they come, so Clark is being picked up here by group number two but if we take a look up the road there we go, you can see up in front that is a group a number one in front and this group two is starting to swell if they work back together. It's going to get really interesting here because they could pull back the 13, it's almost as big group two. So if group two works well they can pull back group number one, it'll take it back from 30 rounds at the front. Is, can this group do this? This is going to be interesting, it's coming down here, it's the uh, distance between the uh, riders the time gap holding I think at about 15 seconds as they come round now this is where group number two really have to make this work now if you're in that second back if you're listening live at the moment come on guys get this together because you need to pull the gap back it's currently holding at 15 seconds at the moment I think in front we're going to see if that's going to stay the same yet yeah, holding at 15 seconds it's not going out too much at the very front of the group it's still getting a bit twitchy and I think Carl Crutchlow's the man who's winding it up on the front he's got Russ Downing for company but it's one big bunch at the moment at the front and the pressure is starting to go on nobody being drifted out the back and this group are not closing that gap down the gaps continue to open it's 17 seconds now up to the group in front let's jump up to the back of the front group if that makes any kind of sense I'm hoping it does to you as much as it does to me so we're going to jump across this is the back of the uh, second group Tully Cliff is in there and if we take a little bit of a look back there's no sign that it's about 60 seconds that is the chasing group just coming round the corner and with less than 10k to go you can see we are going to be finishing on the mall and this is going to be the running the battle for the overall the final positions 
It is down to the riders who are in this group. This is a very, very select group in here. And it contains both our men's and our women's leaders on the road at the moment. Copeland, the um, first man on the road. Looking back into the leading group, we're just going to see. I think it is going to be Becky Story who's holding the wheels in there at the moment. So you can just see this group making its way down into a Parliament Square at the moment. And this is a very, very quick group indeed. They're rolling along at the moment. We're watching Mr. Tony Cliff from Drama Chef Rack at the moment. He's currently kicking out 325 watts. You can see the top left hand side of your screen. Uh, this is the uh, group in its entirety at the moment. There's not going to be anybody else join this group. But what we are going to see if the pace hots up is it's going to split. Now, if you remember back to that initial profile that we showed you, you'll know that the next run along here is very flat. We've got a flat run on along the river. When we turn off the river, 1%, 2% gradient. It's then going to start getting interesting because what will happen is we're going to start moving up on a two. The uh, bends, the twists on the turns towards Hyde Park and the Serpentine. When that happens, expect to see riders distanced off the back. You're not going to see a group go, I don't think, until we hit that underpass. As we dip into the underpass and up the other side, that's when it's really going to start to get interesting because that climb is what will split it. It'll be hammered home if somebody kicks hard into the dip down towards T Square, down towards Trafalgar Square, where the right one under Admiralty Arch will take our riders in to the finish. It's going to be a very quick chain going indeed. And uh, just taking a look in here, I suspect it is going to be Story, who's our fastest woman in this group. I'm going to drop a glass uh, to Mr. Doxy here. Doxy. Another of our regular riders and uh, good to uh, have him in with this uh, group. We're going to just uh, go shoot in on Mr. Doxy. Nice uh, bike there. Riding along uh, very, very smoothly on that Zwift uh, Concept bike. That was the fastest all-round bike. If you were to have one bike, that's the one you'd want. Not the fastest on the flat, not the fastest on the climbs, but the fastest all-round that is for sure. Now let's uh, take a look who's in here. Tony Cliff's in here. Carl Crutchlow's in here. Doxy's in here, Little is in here, can't discount Little, he's been very, very quick when we're in Yorkshire, he's in second to Taylor, Taylor is in this group as well, we've got Story, our women's leader in here, in that uh, maroon kit, we're going to try and drop down into that pack, as uh, Story holds the wheels here, just working away in or through this pack, and it looks like Story nicely surfing the wheels, not doing too much. You get on the front, all of a sudden that drag will come in. But Story rolling away through and uh, at the moment holding round the front, just taking a little bit of a look. Let's have a look, see if we can catch up with a few of the other regulars in here. Mr. Stevenson, I uh, can't discount him when it comes uh, to uh, the uh, faster run in. And uh, Stevenson from out of the uh, saddle looking smooth as well. 70 revs, not too high. He's definitely got plenty in reserve, that is for sure. Now, let's have a little look at Mr. Williams. Uh, Ryan Williams uh, taking uh, some very good uh, KOMs on uh, Strava and uh, has been doing the business. Uh, and, uh, certainly, the uh, coaching paying off, as is the uh, chain gang. You know, just have to do a little bit of a spin around because he's buried in the pack here. Let's take a little bit of a look across. We might have to drop into a direct face on shot. Let's see if we can get him. Here he comes, the man in the blue. And this is uh, Ryan Williams. He's absolutely hammering, going really well. Got to watch out if this was on the hill. He would be a man to watch out for. That is for sure because he's very, very quick indeed. So this pack rolling through nicely along the river. They're soon going to turn off and away from the river. This is the turn that's coming up. And is this pack going to break up as we come up on to the climb? It's Cal Crutchlow who is winding it up on the front. Again, you can see this pack coming round together and Russ Downing is sitting on the back of the pack with Mackin at the moment. Thwaites is in there as well. Mark the Thwaites. 
Uh, definitely not riding like a donkey today. He said he was he was a uh, donkey on Tuesday on the hills. That's never true of Marke. A very class rider, and uh, definitely one to watch in the sprint. Will he have the sprint and power of some of these younger riders? He's got a lot of weight to uh, shove down the road. That's for sure. Uh, he's even heavier than me. That takes some doing. It has to be said. And, uh, watching these riders all moving nicely in now. If you look up at the top of the screen. Top right hand side, you'll see the map, you'll see we're approaching the bends now. This is where the gradient eases, breaks, and goes again. So, as we take a little bit of a look up, we're coming in a slight right hand turn, 1% gradient. And we said as we hit this climb, we weren't going to see an attack too much off the front, but what we would see would be a drop off the back for some of our riders, and that's what's happening. The pressure is on and it's starting to stretch the group at the back. The riders are fighting to get in position. They want to be in there as they come in to these turns. So as they come around here, the riders weave around this a massive U-turn and the gradient drops to zero. But what's gonna happen? We're gonna come around and on to the straight now. Here we go. A gradient is dropping down a little bit. It kicks again as we go up through the next series of bends question is can everybody stay in this group or are people going to start to struggle Russ Taylor Matt sorry Russ, Taylor, Russ Downing and Matt Taylor will get this watch around uh, holding the position nicely in here Ryan Williams is holding in Little's holding in this group quite well at the moment and Thwaites is in there as well Ryan Williams nicely pinned in the middle we're just going to sit with Ryan at the moment because I think he's going to be able to go with the moves remember as we come in we're going to go up towards the very top and then we're going to drop down the side if we drop across. We're now at 2% gradient. As we watch this group pan through here, one or two people just fighting on the back of the group. It looks to me like Tom Bowering is rolling around the back. Mark Waits, Billy No Mates rolling around on the back of this group. You can just see just hanging on into the back. But coming up very shortly is the turn that takes us towards the underpass. Now, the 2% is going to change. We're about to run alongside Hyde Park and the uh, Serpentine. We're going to roll up. I think it's going to just pull in on the left. So that strip of blue is the Serpentine in Hyde Park. And uh, what you're going to see is as you go through Hyde Park, the uh, riders are going to start heading in towards the underpass. The gradient will go from zero down to minus 2%. You're going to go under the underpass. It's going to have really picked up currently 59 kilometers an hour. And it's starting to kick up here. Copeland moves up to the front. Downing's moved to the front. Ryan Williams is up at the front. Crutchlow rolling around the front as well. Story holding position. She knows she can't afford to go backwards anywhere here. It's very smart ride. Story riding in here, keeping up near the front. But that's where everybody wants to be in just like a road race. Nobody wants distancing now. This is where it's going to get difficult and speed is going to pick up 50 kph now at minus 2. 52, 53, it's going to go easily up to 60 now. We're going to bring our drone camera down here. We want to hit the bridge on the way through. As we come in, you can see everybody's looking twitchy. Who's going to hit their power up? Who's going to see whether they can reduce their aerodynamic drag? Maybe reduce the weight on the way in through. Russ is up near the front of this group here. He knows it's going to get twitchy as they go through. You can see now, here we go, first of the drafting power ups. That means that the draft is worth double to the uh, riders kicking it in there. And uh, you can just uh, see they're starting to go in now. The feathers are starting to fly as well. Who's going to be able to kick it on at the very, very front of this group? We're going to drop across, I think, here to Matt Taylor very shortly. If he's the man, I suspect who he's going to go. But at the very, very front of the uh, group, it's starting to stretch here. What's it doing behind? We're going to zoom out here. And you can just see it splitting behind our leading riders. I think uh, it looks to me like Copeland's gone for it off the very, very front here. We're going to try and drop across. It's Jono and Copeland who have uh, gone for it here. We're going to go across to Copeland. And he's got company. And the company's shooting right past him. It's Matt Taylor who's gone for it now. 9.8 watts per kilo from Taylor as he goes flying past Copeland. Let's get across to Mr. Taylor. Let's take a look at this young man because he's riding very, very strongly indeed. 
So here we go. Taylor's in here. Remember, he was kicking up at 8 watts per kilo. What's happening behind him? The group has been smashed. That's what's happening. One or two people has become a steady stream off the back of the group. But has he got enough? It's three seconds on Copeland. Can he hold it together? He's got not very far to go. It's literally a matter of about a kilometre or so into the finish here. 90 degree left turn. The gradient comes off. 4% becomes 1%. And he's going to be followed very hard here now. Normally we would say it's enough if you've got a three second gap. But this is one man against the rest of the tide that's coming. The bunch is split in two. That chasing group. And Russ is doing the donkey work here. He's pulling down Taylor. And Russ is coming in hard here. He was kicking over at 8.5 watts per kilo. Can Taylor respond to this? Has he gone too early? Taylor's just backing off a little bit. He's gone up to 7 watts per kilo. Is that enough to get him into this leading group? Copeland is in here. Is it going to be Copeland's day? He's been the uh, bridesmaid, never the bride for so many times on the way through. Is it going to be his day today? You can see the aero drag of power up has gone in. That means less aerodynamic drag up at the front. But is it enough for Jono, who is riding up to the front? We're going to see Alan is right up there as well. Who's your money on in this sprint? Taylor, I know, has got plenty left. Truslow's been sprinting well. Uh, let's drop in with Russ. Let's see if Russ has got anything left on this group. He should be able to see it unfold from behind them. Taylor's going to be leading this out at the front. Russ is coming down the side here. 11.4 watts per kilo. He's timed it right. He's gone in. When he is at the green line now, is anybody going to be able to match this from behind? Here comes the kick from behind. Carl Truslow's coming strong here. Is Crutchlow going to be able to take it? Crutchlow goes through the line and takes it. So Cal Crutchlow adds to his many, many wins on motorbikes. He does it on two wheels this time. It's a battle of variety. Putting in a phenomenal time there. That, I think, is his fastest time through the sprint line. As you can see, all these riders now working their way in and through. We're going to jump back. From group number one to group number two. Uh, so you can just see this is the second group just coming in and uh, through the uh, straight. We're going to try and jump back a little bit further to get ourselves back behind the uh, riders. So let's have a little bit of a look and see where Ted Tunnicliffe is. I think uh, Ted from Sheffield is going to be through that line as well. It shows you just how quick it is out there. Let's uh, see how far back we have to go to actually catch ourselves. One of our riders out in the uh, main course. It looks uh, to me like Luke is uh, Luke's done riding well at the minute. Russ is well on his way through here. So we're going to have to dive back. Now, so these uh, riders uh, start to ease it down. We're just going to jump in uh, with Tom Bowing, who I think is uh, just taking it a little bit steady now, having rolled through that line. We're going to work our way back. So at the moment, the riders on that warm down, going up the side of the course. We're going to drop back into the pack, and we'll try and bring you some more of our riders coming back in. Some fantastic riding already. Plenty more riders out on the course, and uh, we're going to try and catch up with all of our riders if they're still out there and uh, riding. Let's see who is out there at the moment and uh, riding So dropping back to Swan, who's already in and uh, through that line. Looks like Lily doing the uh, business today. And lots of our riders already in and through that finish. And uh, actually going to be quite tricky, I think, to uh, jump back. Lily, uh, our green jersey wearer, the uh, women's green jersey wearer, with that fantastically fast time uh, on her way in uh, through the uh, circuit. 10.974 Lily who's just coasting away uh, down that straight. Great ride by uh, Lily. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of our fantastic sponsors. Remember, 
Grand Tour Coffee and making sure that we are fueled up. Doing the business with the caffeine, make sure you get onto their website, make sure you get uh, yourself uh, fueled with the guys who support the uh, sports. Uh, Halo Wheels, of course, keeping uh, Russ rolling on his Pinarello frame. A massive thank you to OTE, keeping me refueled throughout the day. A big, big thank you to the uh, guys at Wahoo, their trainers, uh, making sure that everybody's uh, got the right amount of power. Can't recommend them highly, in a fantastic bit of kit. And uh, definitely one of the uh, great innovations, the smart trainer. You want reliability, you want realism, and that's exactly what you get from the Wahoo trainers. A big thank you to HMT Hospitals, who have kept me in one piece, and of course to me, Yorker Cycling. A big thank you to all of our sponsors, who have dropped in with prizes to uh, the uh, bad uh, company, a uh, brewing company based up in uh, Tokwith. A massive thank you, of course, to the uh, guys who have uh, been out sponsoring people like Muckoff along with the team who have been giving us a lot of surprises. Halo Wheels giving us counts. We've had OTE goodies as well. So, so many of our sponsors doing the business and uh, as Mr. McKinney uh, stretches his legs uh, down over the top of the climb. We're going to drop back across some fantastic riding today. Some fantastic uh, action out there. Absolutely flat out out there. Flat out in here. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who's ridden. Make sure you tell your friends to watch live feed. We're going to keep on improving. Keep on bringing you more and more action on the way through. Remember, we're going to be out on Tuesday. We're going to have a hilly circuit. It's traditional. Will we see the finish up at the top of the the Innsbruck climb. Are we going to have a mountain top finish or are we going to see something maybe a little bit bumpier on the way through? Remember, lots of action today, lots of action still to come. Make sure if you are heading out on the road, you keep it rubber side down, don't go end up uh, scaring yourself to bits uh, like muggins here and have to go visit HMT hospital to get patched up. And uh, remember, if you're out on those turbo trains, keep hydrated, make sure you enjoy yourself, stay safe. From me, Matt Pay, from Russ and from Dean from Down in Cycling, a big thank you for watching. Stay safe and enjoy yourselves and have a good weekend. We'll see you soon.